Can you see my camera? The camera is off. What the H? And we are live on this week's episode of the Beyond the Mrs. podcast. I am, oh, there he is. I am one of there your you hosts, go. Mayor Reynolds. <laughs> I'm I'm Jade Eye, and I'm not home today. And I I'm pretty sure the first words uh, what's it called if somebody uh converts, uh what's the like te- uh text or spoken word to, oh text to speech. No no there like there's another was it stenography is that what is that it like the old you school. You know you said you said convert and I immediately just thought of Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, well, whatever, you, whatever. Whoever's taking the minutes for this podcast, the first words let the record show were what the H. Literally, what the H. So put that on the record. On the record. Yeah. Okay, I, let's see. That, that's back to my mayoral days. Like, all, uh, you know, everything we did was recorded and, like, somebody had to take the minutes. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I, always, I would always, like, have to point stuff out, like, don't put that in the minutes. Like, like <laughs> one time, right, every time in a meeting, I, uh, I dropped a, an f bomb, and, and I was like, <laughs> I took the CD and I snapped it in half. I was like that <laughs> one's not going on the record. Yeah, uh, no, I know exactly what you mean because uh, we do minutes over at EGL, uh, and I we we rotate them every week to let somebody else handle the notes and stuff like that as a form of you know sharing the you're burden. You're doing your job. You're j- yep sharing the burden. There we go. That's the way, best way to put it. <laughs> All right, so let's. This week we got everything from Apex to Silent Hill, Halo, Gears, Resident Evil, maybe even a little Fall Guys. But let's start with probably the biggest news of the week: the bomb that was dropped, Starfield and Redfall. Yeah, devastation. We're we're delayed to 2023. Um, are you devastated? No. No. What What are your no. thoughts? Yo, because this was a big this was a big deal. Starfield was pretty much bound to be one of the three biggest games of 2022 for sure i would think yeah yeah i mean like don't get me wrong i'm bummed but like we've obviously seen like the delays should happen for obvious reasons like i mean i love halo infinite i'm glad that we could play it but it's that's a game that could have definitely dealt with a delay Mm uh and like we all know bethesda titles like they if they're broken majority of the time yeah so i'm not devastated i'm bummed but like you know that just means a better game that we can get basically for free still at no additional different price than what yeah. we were getting on Game Pass. Uh, and Redfall, honestly, I had, like, I, I don't even know what Redfall is still. So See, I'm, I'm not really bummed about it, to be honest. That's why I did not, neither of these delays were surprises to me at all. Because we have yeah. seen virtually nothing from either of these games. And Starfield has at least Literally been, nothing, yeah. been in development for long, I mean, long time. They, I mean, they started this, they said, like, you know, it's like 20 years ago or something on paper, which doesn't mean it was in obviously active development. But um, and I'm still still and I know I'm going to catch hate for this. I'm still of the opinion that Starfield and Bethesda have shown me absolutely no reason to be excited for this game. And this comes from somebody who's not a huge RPG fan, not saying it's going to be bad. But I'm saying at this point in time, they haven't shown me a reason. Like so many people are excited for Starfield. I'm not saying it's wrong to be because I know. You know, the description is Skyrim in space. Um, you know, that, then that's exciting. But I haven't seen any reason to be excited for this game other than like pure blind faith that people have that it's going to be amazing. Well, I mean, like we've already seen like what Skyrim is capable of doing and how it pushed the boundary at the time. And, you know, Elder Scrolls and Fallout have had such like amazing universes. Mm-hmm. Like, I think there's at least enough interest to be have to have had about the game yeah and that's what gets me excited is that like i know that bethesda will be able to put out a, a title that is that i can just get like lost in for mm-hmm. for, for what sure. would be years like i still get lost in skyrim if i replay it right now yeah. so it's, it's i'm pretty sure it's gonna be a good game but at the same time like you know bethesda games are obviously like a problem and just like <laughs> they're gonna always gonna need some form of like delay mm-hmm. so i mean i don't know i think Oh, go on. I, I was gonna say, what AAA game can you think of from like the past, I don't know, three to four years that has not received like a significant delay? I mean, the word is God of War Ragnarok is gonna be delayed, uh, and that was another one. Like, I don't. I just saw my friend. Who, my friend, I'm so sorry. My friend has okay. a one wheel. I just saw him wheeling away. <laughs> <laughs> like every game, like I, it's really strange. I almost wonder if it's part of the hype cycle these days to purposely like announce a date that you pretty much know like 
we're probably not going to meet this. But when it gets delayed, it like it sends shockwaves through the whole like uh, every gamer everywhere talks about it. Like, man, it was delayed. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then like because it happens to every single AAA game. I mean, I mean, it's happened to like every platform too. like freaking Metroid Prime 4 delayed. Yep. The Last of Us 2 delayed. I mean, Metroid Prime 4 was a significantly different delay. That's like an entire damn reboot, a reboot of the game, basically. What they told us. Yeah. yeah. Um, still haven't seen like, it. You know, Still haven't seen that either. Yeah, but like this delays happen and like I get it. I mean, two games, it's a bummer, but I think the biggest concern people have right now about these delays is that now they're suggesting that Xbox has still no games, um, despite the fact there has been really good games that launch on Xbox exclusively already this and year. Despite the fact um, that they were a monopoly two weeks ago. Two weeks ago they were a monopoly, now they have no games. <laughs> now they have no games, yeah. I I hate I hate console or twitter i don't know if you saw and I, I asked if like anybody did but i got somehow like sucked into like a console or conversation despite my best efforts to usually stay away <laughs> from them uh but like people have been absolutely like shredding on xbox because of just stupid things like well he's prom like phil spencer's promised so many games it's just like dude i'm pretty sure at this point it's the developer's problem not so much as phil's like he's oh. the one that gave these people a job more than most of them yeah and in in total fairness to, I mean, fit, Phil took over Xbox during a horrible time. Let's just be honest. And he's put together like some really promising, insanely promising industry leading stuff. I mean, Game Pass uh, yeah. being one of the most prominent. Uh, and, you know, everybody thinks like, you know, uh, the, you know, Bethesda and Activision Blizzard and stuff. The Bethesda deal is like still relatively <laughs> new. These games were well into development way before Xbox even stepped in you know yeah and that's a good point because i'm pretty sure had xbox not even acquired them they were still going to delay this game oh yeah like definitely. if it was like on pc if or anything on they've got also, a bigger also. budget and more resources now than they did before yeah this is a good thing and i think that obviously twitter these twitter users Jaffy. and stands and weirdos are just you know, doing their thing to what jaffy David Jaffe. Jaffe. Oh, yeah, David Jaffe. Yeah. That poor guy. That, I don't feel bad for him one bit. He sticks his nose into every single... That's what I'm saying. I, I feel bad That's like he's the way he is. Yeah, I mean, it's really sad, too, because that guy, like, he's going to be remembered for a lot of stupid stuff like that. But, like, that guy created Twisted Metal and God of War. Like, that's, like, yeah. as much as I dislike what he has, like, become, like, that's, like, a legendary game designer. Like... Yep. Twisted Metal and God of War, like, what What a resume. Like, that's amazing. Most people don't make I mean, like, one mildly good game, you know? That's, that's That goes back to that thing we dis discussed. It's like where all of our, like, favorite game designers are now, like, washed and chalked and <laughs> pretty much irrelevant now these days because of really, really bad takes. It's so it's sad. Cliffy B, David Jaffe, uh, Marty O'Donnell. Yeah. <laughs> legends like literal <laughs> legends like like I, 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 legend. and i will never take that away from any of them i can be like you know what i kind of can't stand this guy but like you know, cliffy b unreal and gears of war like that's incredible you know like marty o'donnell mm -hmm. one of the greatest gaming soundtracks of all time like like bar none just can't take it away from everything else he could do could suck and that's fine oh uh, wait just wait uh, these new game designers, we're not going to care about them anymore whenever Elon Musk protects their rights <laughs> to say whatever they want and it not matter. Redfall, I, I gotta, I'm gotta. i probably the only person, Twitter is pretty toxic, Chica. Um, I know I know Witchy from my stream, that's why I call her Chica. Um, different username. So if I ever say that, you know who I'm referring to. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gotta be the only person who's probably more disappointed, but again, I was not surprised at all by the delay of, of Red redfall because i'm really looking forward to that arcane is an amazing studio and this is their first like game as a service game uh you know it's just it's yeah, i think it's gonna be really good but it's 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 one of those things too when they announced the release date like you got to look at like they just shipped death loop like last year and that's like a yeah, world-class game like ga it won game of the year awards so you know i know it's like technically a different you know, one one of them is in like yeah. Austin, I think, and one of them is you know technically a different on the other side of the world. Yeah, but still, like you know that they support each other a lot, and and you know budgets are allocated differently depending on what game is really like in the you know 
the, mm -hmm. it, the lead development. It's like they just finished a game that what was so good that it obviously took a ton of resources and, and time and development and energy. It was one game of the year awards. And then to turn around, you know, a year, year and a half later and say, oh, yeah, and here's our next game. And this game is a service. That's like impossible. I don't know yeah, how we how how that date ever even got like shoved out there. We haven't even seen a screenshot of this game. It was a CG trailer, and that's it. What's been interesting too is the conversation around like how this is going to really impact like the Xbox brand, and people still talk Xbox ex like exclusively about the console still, and yeah. it's just like, dude, the console literally does not matter anymore at this point, and. People are just like, well, now like Xbox has like a new generation with no titles. Like even like the hardcore diehard fanboys like Colt Eastwood were like saying things like, oh, Colton. Xbox has no games after two years of their new generational console. I was like, didn't Halo Infinite and like Forza come out or something like and that? Psychonauts 2, use? which got nominated for Game of the Year awards last year yeah. and uh, Grounded, which is still going and... <laughs> People people are still like in this weird vacuum space conversation about just the console, and it's just like who cares about the console anymore? It's sick hardware, but it's like one let's be piece real. of the pie. Like that's it. One piece of the pie. Of like a and, like, slice majority pie. of players, majority of players are also going to be on PC anyways. Yeah. So like, what what's what? Why is everyone so defended about like the the stupid plastic box? And streaming's going to become an even bigger part too. It's it's like a huge part of their future. Fortnite streaming thing has been really cool. That's what I, I'm tried, I tried it out. It works really well. Yeah. I was like, this sounds kind of too good to be true. No, it, it was pretty solid. You have to be on Wi-Fi though, like most things. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but uh, everyone's like talking about like how this is like Xbox's like worst year again or something like that. And how many you know, worst years like, have they had? <laughs> how many were? Yeah, I was like, do y'all remember like 2013? Whenever they like announced the Xbox One. Um, oh, that first and, year or two of Xbox One was rough. Yeah. And people are like goal posting hard because I, I remember people are gassing up like Rise Son of Rome as if it was like <laughs> one of the best, most unique Xbox exclusives they've ever had. And I'm just like, I think he I think people are capping a little bit too that hard for this like game a, right now. That game's like a solid seven at best on its best day. Like it's not yeah. it's not horrible by any means, but it's not like a you could totally see why they didn't make it a franchise. Yeah, and like people are just saying, man, they really should have stuck with Son of Rome, and it's just like, well, they they got you like studios that, that have that IP was, that are gonna do way better than that. That was a clear Don Matrick. We need a God of War. We need a God of War, and then somebody make us a God of War. You know, like that was the obvious like Don Matrick Xbox era thing. Yeah. I, oh man. Yeah. Interesting times. The delays suck though. They really do. Yeah. But I mean, like. Somebody like told me whenever I said that like I've been gaming on Xbox, but like I don't play there exclusively, and like this, and I'm, I was explaining to myself, yeah, like the delays aren't like terrible things. Mm -hmm. And someone like had the had the courage to ask, let's just say you go to a restaurant and they're all out of food, and like you want to eat at that restaurant, <laughs> what do you do? And I'm like, survival I'm just gonna or go video to an, games. I'm just gonna go to another restaurant and like eventually come back. I mean, like the, the food's not gone forever, and I'll you know, just go somewhere else. I, I had a very similar experience the other day, where I, I go to the same place. I'm so glad you made this comment, and we're off on this tangent now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I go to like the same place for lunch at work, like every day. There's this deli, or yeah, deli, like really, and they make really good food. And I went there the other day. And they were super backed up, like like insanely backed up, like like 20 people in line. And I only have like, you know, like half an hour or so before I need to get back and do my next thing. So I, I did. I like I left, you know, but like I didn't throw a fit. Like I didn't say anything to anyone. They all know me yeah. there. But it's like I, I left and went and I got something else. Like like I came back later, like, I don't know, the next day or whatever. And like they had seen that I had left and, and they like gave me like my lunch for free. And it's like and I'm not knocking them. But it's, it's that, like that mentality that you said, like, oh, my God, like, you know, like we could have lost him forever. And it's like, no, I come here every day because I really like the food yeah. and you guys are really nice people. And that's it. Like, it, you, it, no big deal. I just went I went to got boneless wings somewhere, you know, <laughs> not, not the end of the world. Oh, oh, no, I had a, I had to temporarily like be inconvenienced by the slightest ever thing and notion. There's that 30 restaurants within five minutes <laughs> of me. Like, it was such an interesting, like 
I, I feel like he was like, I'm going to get you with this one right here. I'm just like, no, I'm a normal person. I will literally be so unbothered that I will just go <laughs> to some other restaurant. And I also like added to it. And I'm like, you know, let's just pretend that the restaurant was out of what I wanted to eat, what I normally eat there all the time. But they also serve the exact same food that the restaurant across the street does, but for a much cheaper price, which is Game Pass. Why should I go over to the other location and spend <laughs> way more money over there for the exact same thing? And like he, he didn't answer to that one. It was like a reply to my response to him. So I don't think he either saw it. But like after that, he was just like, OK, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> you win. Goodbye. Like literally, like if anything, this opens up my time more for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Yeah. Well, and you know what? It opens I, up more time for other games. I totally think if this if this was the old Bethesda, Starfield would have shipped this November, and it probably would have been a buggy freaking mess. And see, this is one of the things that Microsoft has allowed them to do. Like, Microsoft has Game Pass. They've got 30, whatever it is, nine studios now or, or whatever. Um, so Microsoft can say, hey, no, take the extra six months. We are not desperate for that yeah. money. We are not desperate for that money. Like, we're a ginormous company. Whereas if you're a smaller company like Bethesda, it's like, if we don't ship this game in November, like, that's going to impact our operations for, like, the next, like, year. Yeah. You know, and Microsoft's like, nope. It it was different when they were owned by like uh, whoever Zenimax was owned by. I forgot who, but like for the most part, everybody was like, everybody doesn't really see that value of like being a first party IP. Cause like the argument is like, Oh, they have zero like good management skills over at Microsoft. And it's just like, dude, if there was a last of us three delay on this, like people would be singing and praising like PlayStation yeah. to be doing this, it's which they be should good be. When it be comes. Praising delays. Right. Right. Yeah. Like you should be praising delays, but like, they just like, the the out the outliers and the you know the weirdos just kind of like just continue to like you know just hate on Xbox because it's the coolest thing to do there. But yeah. you know, a I mean, normal the, person will just literally go play another game. There's that famous Shigeru Miyamoto quote where he says, you know, a bad game is bad forever. A delayed game is eventually Gets great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's so. I mean, Nintendo has delayed games forever too, going for a long time. Like like they delay Zelda games like entire years or more. Like just like uh, yeah. yeah. It, it's gonna, and nobody freaks uh, out. It's like because you know it's gonna be good when it ships. Remember that Zelda game that they announced with the Wii U that never even hit the Wii U until it hit the end of the Wii U's life cycle, and that was Breath of the Wild. <laughs> I forgot. Like, legit, Bre dude, I forgot Breath of the Wild was on later. Wii U. Wow, I totally yeah, it forgot. Was, it was that. on the Wii U. Holy crap! Yeah, it's insane. And like, if you watch the video comparisons, it's like day and night. I never, oh, yeah. I never would have expected to see a Switch actually like really show how much of a better game it is on its hardware yeah um but i mean like i'll give the benefit of the doubt here like i will say that like if people have frustration and like angst against like xbox for like not really putting out like top notch quality and by top notch quality i'm saying like they're not putting out like a god of war yeah like every release that they have like it's fair to say like you know what they're just like not really putting out games that i'm really interested in or they're just not as good or complete yeah, as they should be. Like Halo choice. Infinite is a good example. That's that's a choice. That's a that's a reasonable, rational choice. But you know, it's that's that's the uh, that's a weird outlier like uh, example because also, quite literally anybody who's like trying to get into Xbox is prop and this is Xbox's strategy in my opinion is they're not looking to convert PlayStation fans at all. They're looking to like get net new customers. Yeah gaming keeps getting bigger and bigger why would you chase people who are already confirmed to like stick with their platform and you know I, I it's so funny too because really since the playstation 5 launched and sent especially since jim ryan took over at, at sony like i agree and i and i will i have always praised the quality of sony's first party releases like like they, they generally don't miss you know like they're very good but like you think of how many games Sony releases like, you know, they're going to be really good. But what do they ship like three games a year, like max? I mean, they're in a really slow spot right now, too, for the past yeah. year, year and a half, two years. And there's not a lot of games that they've announced that, like, we know are coming eminently. Everybody's like, you know, riding on like uh, a Last of Us uh, remake possibly coming out this year. Um you know, and then a lot of their other games are years out. I mean, I don't know when Spider-Man 2 is shipping, but Wolverine is definitely, if I'm guessing, four Our, years like, away. Like, KOTOR is out, out of the way as well. Oh, yeah, and, like, definitely. I mean, we really don't even have, These like, an take actual time. for, like, God of War. 
And that's like, that's probably where Sony does really best at. It's just like having a new hardware and just having what their like long-term plan is, because this has happened like the past two generations where the PS3 really showcased, like once Uncharted 2 came out and that was like halfway through its life cycle, Mm -hmm. all the way to the end where it had The Last of Us. And then same thing with PlayStation 4, you know, they've had like a couple of bangers, like their first, I think three years was pretty banging because they had at least Horizon Zero Dawn and Infamous. Um, mm-hmm. But again, it's like a very spread out. And until the end of the year, that's whenever like Spider-Man, God of War, Last of Us 2 really came out and were part of like the really big, you know, end of end of life cycle mm-hmm. games, which is a good thing. That's, the la- and The Last of like, Us was yeah, like, bad. The Last of Us launched on PS3 and like the last probably... Like literally at, the at last longest, two years, the last the, game, like, the last year, I think, before the PS4 came out, it was like literally the PlayStation 3's like last breath. It was like, Swan song. He, yeah, here's our final effort, you know, like, and it was amazing. It was like a technical yeah. wonder at the time in every aspect, and um, and that took Naughty yeah, Dog, I, you know, basically the entire yeah. generation. Yeah. And then I'm pretty sure Naughty Dog is going to come out and announce whatever their new next project is. I just like know people are going to like the hell out of that game and i still don't think last of us 2 is anywhere as good a game looks beautiful oh, people like that are, is a technical marvel people but are, like the game itself is trash people i'm hearing especially on like reset era are already hating on naughty dog's next project before it's even announced because it's virtually confirmed to be game as a service sony told them that they need a game as a service from them and people mm-hmm. are already hating on it it's like that that's very exciting like a, a, a developer the caliber of naughty dog like I mean, at worst, they're a top five studio in the, in the world. Like, like you could rank yeah. them wherever you want, but they're a top five quality studio yeah, in the world. They're up there. And to have a, a studio like them working on ga- like, they may, they very well may redefine game as a service, but everybody's automatically just hating on it. You know, oh my God, it's going to be game as a service and it's going to be rife uh, with microtransactions. And it's like, guys, guys, and- like everyone's such a, like an abnormal, not so very, like, cloned gamer these days everyone loves to be like the niche gamer as much as they want to be and it's just like uh, you're literally not that special you've got people who have the same echo echo chamber as you bro (laughs) being a gamer these days means crying about everything you can on the internet like who can who can complain more it's it's like a big competition i don't get it i don't Uh, i'm old i'm old like i i'm I'm just gonna be able to say that more and more like as the older i get i don't get these kids i don't need kids these days it's interesting too because uh you say that and some like another person like i said i got into the console war conversation without even trying this one guy was just like calling me like a hardcore fanboy and stuff like that and like i looked at his twitter page and in his bio he is like saying father of two uh husband of one and i'm just like dude why is a why is a grown man with like children and a wife like calling like trying to be insulting as possible <laughs> on yes. Twitter? I I say that to people all the time. Like, you know, there's t- on TikTok is where I get in my normal wars because there's a lot of nonsense on TikTok. And like people will just like like I posted this like Halo Infinite clip the other day. It was like an overkill. And somebody was like, you know, two of these kills, like you were assisted on, like everybody was like, just like ragging on it, like trash, you know, like posting like skull emojis and stupid stuff. And uh, I said, like, why did you even take the time to comment on this? Like, why didn't you just scroll by it? Like, that's what I do. If I see something that's like not interesting to me, I just go. I don't sit there and be like, oh, man, you really suck. You know, like, like, why did you take the time out of your day? to say this you know i know well you're trash that's why oh okay i get it now <laughs> and i got in a war all oh, the internet this one guy who was uh like i made a post about Splicky, and he just he, he replied to every single comment like dead game dead game dead game dead game he's just going through and i was like that is i was like is that's, the, that's someone who is hurt because the right. game probably died for them <laughs> I, I, I was like how did your life get any better by leaving 14 consecutive dead game comments like like what's your beef here man like just just they're, like, they're just that good mayor yeah I, it's crazy crazy girl all right crazy <laughs> all right crazy girl <laughs> you know like, exactly that's like some asmr <laughs> what you've never heard that's a, that's like a tiktok um thing where like this i think i have heard it once or twice where this girl while. is just like crazy Crazy girl. For a minute, I thought you were <laughs> so, doing that old man on uh, was it King of the Hill? 
who, who had a thing for Bobby, the the newspaper boy, the Hank's son. Was it King of the Hill? No, it's Family Guy. Does you think of Family Guy? I think it's, it's Herbert the Pervert. It's Family. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. He's. It's not Bobby. You're it's uh, about Chris. Little old Herbert. Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Want to come by and eat some popsicles? Yeah. Yeah. I can guy. never do his little whistle. That whistle is so hard. <laughs> little popsicles. If that guy existed, he would definitely live in Texas, no doubt. No, he would live in like probably like Massachusetts or something. Alabama. <laughs> Alabama, yeah. West Virginia. Poor uh, Herbert, actually. He's actually got some lore to him. He's like a like a Holocaust <laughs> survivor. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> now we're getting <laughs> uh, No, like like in the show, he's a Holocaust did survivor. Did you see it, it's a big some fucking pedophile? <laughs> There's a there's a there's a new game coming out for Apple Arcade called Warped Kart Racer, and it's got like all the Family Guy characters. It's a Mario Kart clone, but it's all the Family Guy characters, King of the Hill characters, uh, American Dad characters, and there's like another. That sounds cool as hell. One of those shows, <laughs> I'm definitely gonna play it. That actually does sound pretty cool. Uh, all right, let's talk about Apex. So. Oh, okay. I thought we were gonna go into Halo. We will. Don't worry. We will. <laughs> In time, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh apex season 13 launched this this past week and it was a, it was a big one because they redid the ranked system uh new legend no new gun which really gets my go every time we get a season without a new weapon it kind of bothers me but um have you played it you played it at all i played like three games on you played the, the ranked bit. system yeah, I did. Uh, I actually, I, I can't say I've played enough to actually like warrant yeah. any kind of opinion. Yeah, it's been. I've heard a lot of frustration it, from myself included. Um, I Stormpoint has never been my thing. I, I, I don't think it really suits Apex personally. Like Apex's like style of play, and it's like with all those wide open sight lines and. Just like everything is like Spitfire, just just Spitfire spam, Spitfire spam, Spitfire spam, and it's mm-hmm. uh, it, it I don't know. I'm feeling pr- like quite frustrated with it to to the point where I'm just like maybe I do just need to like take a season off. I don't think I will, but like it it the rank system is definitely it's like tough too. It's definitely tough. You take the half off until they go into what's next, uh, World's Edge after yes. after Storm Point. Yeah. Um, is Spitfire no longer a package drop? No, it's on the ground. Um, oh. and they, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really freaking strong. It can shoot from my, it, like, there's no point, basically. This is my totally, like, my biased opinion. Like, you will lose, like, a, a ranged battle if you have a sniper rifle against the Spitfire. Because, like, the dude with the Spitfire can just, like, just keep shooting for days. And if you miss a shot with your sniper rifle, like, you're just gonna die. And it's... Mm-hmm. It's really, I don't know. I'm I'm really frustrated with it. Most people are frustrated with the rank system. Um, a lot of people are hard stuck bronze. Like, not even kidding. Like, like the mm-hmm. new rank system is very, very tough. I I saw Timmy uh, playing, and he's like, he thought he could get to, um, I think uh, Pred in day one, which mm-hmm. he's typically capable of. Yeah. But the next day, I saw him playing, and he was still plat. Yeah. And I was like, oh wow, Timmy's still plat. What the heck? Yeah, it's really tough. Um, do you think these changes are like because it felt very accessible to be able to actually just get to these high ranks though I, see there's some of the changes on paper that i agree with like getting rid of the kill cap i think was good i've always advocated for that like if you frag out and get 15 kills you should not be capped you need to be supported for it i agree yeah 100 percent um like that's just always been my opinion but um there's that and then there's like if your squad gets kills uh, and you like if you don't get any of the kills or assists, you still get like it's a base like a participation. You get like a minor yeah, thing for, yeah. for surviving. You're like if you if you de- if you're dead, you don't get anything. But if you're alive, then you get a little bit, which I don't really disagree with that either. Um, but they've weighted it even more in favor of like placement points. So like you can get like five kills like off the drop, even in like bronze and still like lose RP. But um it's like the, it's like a the way they've done it is kind of weird so like your your kp are worth more like the higher your placement goes so like if you get five kills off the drop maybe they're only worth like i'm making this number up but let, let's say they're worth three but if you get five kills 
and then you don't die until like third place every single one of those kp is worth like 12 so like all those kills become more valuable the higher you place you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. yeah it sounds like they just want to like slow the game down entirely then like and on storm point I know that these... they have slowed it down yeah it's, it's, it's <laughs> just, the final the circles and bronze are like algs there's there's like 11 squads alive in the final circle and bronze and like <laughs> it's really weird i i want to i want to like just say that's probably what they want and like i i kind of like agree yet disagree with it at the same time not the ranking system i do think that is pretty chalk but as far as like needing to keep these games lasting a little bit longer rather besides just like playing to just like absolutely wipe like the first team you see which obviously is a good objective to have but like literally like most of these games wouldn't even last until like the, the first ring closes and there's yeah. maybe three or four teams left which is a huge like like it, it, it's not fun at that point yeah you know? and i would say last season that was majority of my time in rank even in like plat lobbies yeah i think i think they've gone from like one potential extreme that they're worried about to like another because like like i said to my friend like right now with these games don't feel this is just my experience so far and you know hey maybe i'll change my tune as i i've played quite a bit though like they they don't feel like fun it, it's like mm -hmm. it, it's like a lot of like i said like 11 squads in the final circle or whatever with everybody's using the spitfire there, there's none of that like fast pace like apex like what apex does best in my opinion you know like it's mm -hmm. all like it is more of the algs stuff which is really exciting but it's like i, I don't know it's hard it's hard to explain i guess my my feeling I imagine, sentiment like, for it. It, it's not as fun to me i i'd imagine like the rep the repetition of it can be ex like draining and exhausting yeah yeah that's a good I way to put doing it doing that over and over and over yeah. and over again for like a whole season i can imagine that that's actually pretty exhausting yeah yeah, and I and I think uh like there's definitely like a like the meta has taken hold and it's like so defensive. It's all it's all like mm -hmm. Newcastle, Rampart, and like Gibraltar for the most part. And it's like try or like swap out a lifeline in there. Try me kill a squad that's all like just it's just like nonstop barricades and like and defensive abilities. It's like it's almost like for like playing like Fortnite and somebody's just building like a castle in front of you as you're trying to like kill them and you're just like you know, and I'm not trying. This is not my jam personally. It's like I can't kill these yeah. people. Like it's just nonstop. Gibby bubble. Okay, now Newcastle. All oh, okay now. Or Valk all out, and it's just like, oh my god. I can't really say that. Like I know too much of Newcastle still, to be honest. But I know Valk is still like an S tier hero oh, yeah, that, or legend time. that you want to play for like those obvious reasons for just escaping or just getting to things as fast as you can, which. I like, but I still, I still think she's pretty busted. As she's a character. overpowered. I think there needs to be some sort of nerf to her. Rampart is. I never thought I would say this, but Ram, Rampart is overpowered. Like legit. Like I don't. I didn't even really read. I know they changed some things in the patch they notes. They buffed her chain gun. Right? But uh, but I just kind of ignored it. So I'm like, oh, it's, it's it's Rampart. You know, like who cares? No, I don't. No, she's played by like one percent of people. She's in like every single squad now. She's like insanely overpowered. Got to break those shields, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. What do you think Apex Mobile launches tomorrow? What are you expecting from that? Man, I don't know what to expect out of it, to be honest. They got that new character, Fade, which is funny because, like, Valorant has a new character named Fade, too. Do they? Um, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, and then, like, uh, as far as, like, the mobile side of things, I, I don't really know. Like, my work, I got somebody on my, on my team who's really excited to be running that. There's opportunity in it, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He wants, from, he wants from, like, a kill race tournament for it, too, but I'm just like, man, dude, I'm the more we keep talking about it at work, I was like, I'm just not interested in this game because it's limited only to Android. I'm pretty sure people are, are going to be breaking into the game on like Google Chrome store for PC and just playing it on mouse and keyboard and just killing the game there. I hope that there's some sort of like, that. that is cheap. But They're not even supporting controllers at, at launch, which I think is kind of disappointing. I, 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 Dude, I hate when games do that. That's what Pokemon Unite does too. They don't support controllers on, yeah. on mobile either. They say they're going a, to, a but they haven't yet. And it's like, I don't, that's one of those things where it's yeah. like, well, how do you not have that? It's like a basic feature. The point of mobile wasn't to just like make and force people to play on touch. It was to make your games accessible. So exactly. forcing people to play your way is just extremely, extremely lame. Especially yeah. in like 2022. Yeah. I think that's insane. 
it's great that it's an option, but it shouldn't be the way to play. But we'll see what happens. But I'm interested to see. Um, I thought it was funny. In, like, the little sizzle reel, you get to see, like, Wraith's run animation. And I don't know what. I think they slowed down the movement speed, obviously, for mobile. But with her running, it looked so goofy. <laughs> I was like, why is, Why did you do Wraith this dirty? She looks like an actual weeaboo. <laughs> like just running down the like the sidewalk from like one of their schools because they're trying to get home fast. Maz is already planning the cheat. Um, so, uh, do you think it's a good idea or a bad idea for them to do like exclusive characters? Because there's a lot of, I definitely see the appeal of it from their side. They want to give it, you know, a reason like to get the hardcore Apex fans to go go play it, you know. But mm-hmm. do, do you think that that's you know, too much to to kind of rob the main community? Of the character no. or any character. No. I'm probably unpopular opinion about this, but I don't think it's a bad I don't think it's a bad deal. I mean yeah. like people can complain about it, but I mean you did get a new character. You got Newcastle, who is yeah. probably a significantly better character than what the mobile game is getting anyway. So oh, I'm I, pretty sure like people would just have to cope. What I think they might do is kinda use the mobile version as almost like a testing ground or like like even like rejects like characters that have abilities that just wouldn't translate or might break the game like on pc or console Mm -hmm. it just might be like way too like change combat too much but on mobile like they're not going to care as much so they're like this is a really cool character but it would impact the meta way too much you know and so we're Mm -hmm. just gonna you know like his abilities are pretty um his one is like a void cage which like you throw at enemies and it moves them into like into the void it totally takes them out of the fight it's like crowd control essentially which is a widely hated feature in a lot of games like overwatch or world of warcraft so i could definitely see them being like you know this character was cool but maybe not for the you know a super like our high level competitive game so we're just gonna Mm -hmm. farm, farm this guy out or this girl or whoever comes down the pipeline the mobile version and then they can play it up as exclusive content to get people to go play over there i'd imagine that the reason the the obvious like most mobile games the obvious reason why they have it is to just have their product in markets that they won't wouldn't be able to put it like on a pc so i think apex legends mobile will probably do really well in like china for example do you think it'll do well i was gonna ask oh 100 it's china yeah (laughs) you know like Apex Legends is clearly a really good game if they translate it correctly onto mobile, because I know uh, Call of Duty mobile is no longer available in China. Yeah, and uh, like having another shooter on the market would be good for them. Although it's up in China, I know, I know that um, Apex Legends can be a little bit too diverse for China's. Uh... Yeah, that's true. <laughs> It's a very diverse game for them, so I don't know if it'll actually work in their market, but I'd imagine, again, like this is an attempt to just get the product in other markets where it typically wouldn't do, where it's typically not available. Well, I mean, and I think you you saw directly that because they launched it in like 13 countries already before this, like we're just getting it now. Like we were, we were like not the top priority. They were launching it in countries like Turkey and like Bangladesh and like, like, like these weird like what would sound like to us well why would they launch it there first and it's because that's actually their target audience like you're saying yeah. like that's where they're trying to expose apex legends they already got yeah, us. there's i don't think people really realize is that like whenever people whenever we see like american companies make mobile games they're just like oh what a waste of resources and i'm just like dude the world is a, still a pretty big place and you know it, it can be small at times because we're you know privileged and isolated here in like north america mm-hmm. and especially the united states but like there are like countries who legit will tell you by like government law you are not allowed to play a specific game yeah and you know I, I, that's i'm I'm glad for those other countries to be able to get a game that typically wouldn't be available to them in other ba- in other means of per- uh, playability i mean diablo immortal was initially that was literally the goal of diablo immortal was basically to appeal to only to like the eastern market and that i don't that's why blizzard i think like in their like corporate minds like that's what they were thinking like we're making this game to appeal to the eastern mobile market and they didn't Mm -hmm. really expect the backlash from you know western gamers because like they're like well this game in their minds they're like well this isn't for you but then you know the western Western market was like, no, we we do want this game, and we feel mm-hmm. that you're like you're watering it down, or you're not delivering it to us, or, or whatever. And we had we now saw Blizzard bringing that game to PC in addition to mobile because they heard 
such hardcore feedback, feedback. Yeah. which they should have been able to predict, but they just totally missed it on that one. I feel like, like that's just some really bad listening on behalf of the business. I'm pretty sure like, I, I actually probably, I think that they would bring Diablo Immortal to PC because of like the absolute devastation that the, the announcement was yeah. because it was, it was like, it, it kind of set the trend of who asked <laughs> for video games specifically because they announced it, and literally the entire Blizzard community is like, who asked for this? Like, no one gives a crap about this. Yeah. Um, but they cared enough for the fact that it wasn't available to them to mm-hmm. say, like, why is this not available where I'm at? And I'm pretty sure Blizzard was just like, look, we can't exactly fumble the bag even more than we already have yeah. whenever we thought we could restrict this game I think, to one market. I guess we just make it available to all. Yeah, I, I think if they did, I think it was that game would have been out, like, a year ago if, if they didn't, like, like realize that not only do we need to bring this to pc but it has to release the same day like like people were that upset by it like we can't just say like yeah. oh it'll be on pc in six months or a year like this has to be together or our fans are not gonna forgive us yeah and then watch it suck and then everyone's just gonna be like <laughs> wow why did they even bother making this game hey, for, <laughs> for a mobile game it's gonna be like throwing hands for a mobile game it's been in development for a really long time so i'm actually thinking that it's gonna be like pretty good because that's the thing about mobile Morning. games is they're usually pretty quick. You know, you can get them out there like the quick development cycle. This one's been years coming. So, oh, that, that we found out that's a like a, that's a trend for Blizzard when it comes to all of their games. That's is that true. It's been cooking for a long that's time. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh Bobby, you bastard! <laughs> Dang it, Bobby! All those years we thought Hank Hill was talking about his son, he was actually talking about Bobby Kotick. Bobby Kotick. Yeah. Yep. God dang it, Bobby. But it turns out Bobby would release the game, not hold on to it. All the <laughs> all those stories about Bobby on that show are actually childhood uh, events by Bobby Kotick that have been aired in public yeah. now. The episode when Hank gives tries to give Bobby in a a lesson in investment, and so he gives him. He's like, "I'm gonna give you." Ten, I'm going to give you $20 and I want to see what you can do and turn that into something more. He comes back and like he just sees Bobby on the front porch step in front of like the, the entry to the house at the door. He's like, hey, what you doing there, Bobby? And he like turns around like some sort of like freak gremlin eating a burrito from Taco Bell <laughs> with the money this, that he was given. <laughs> that show is full of classic, just like ungodly funny moments. Like, oh. So, super underrated in it. And it lived to its expectations oh, for the big final time. episode and, too. And it's not politically correct, but it ragged on everybody at the same time. It wasn't it like did. it wasn't like a one side or the other. It was like just totally like everybody got made fun of, and that's why it was fun. Because everybody could it, laugh it about so it together. Great. It was so great to see like Hank, even with his like very conservative like principles on things, be concerned about the smallest, dumbest things. Yeah. Like when we met George W. Bush, he goes, the hand Peg, he's got a limp hand. Yeah. <laughs> he's got a limp hand, Peg. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one, of my, oh, one of my favorite quotes that comes to mind, sorry, soccer fans, is like Bobby comes home from school one day and he wants to sign up for soccer. <laughs> and Hank like sits down with him. He's like, son, I can't do the thing as well as you can. <laughs> soccer was invented by European women and that's why we don't play it or something like <laughs> that. That was a pretty. That was a pretty good hang, dude. You're good. Yours is that way better. Like, uh, yours sounded like a, a more early season one, season two kind of uh, <laughs> Hank, where it's much deeper. It was good still. Uh, or, or like, what what season is that ends with uh, <laughs> Peg like almost dies jumping out of an airplane? Oh, jumping out of it. Yeah. 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 Or and there's like jumping out of there's like some, if you go on, in a rice field. If you go on YouTube, this is a rabbit hole you could fall down. There's like some really wild, like deep and almost disturbing story uh videos about like like the behind the scenes like psychology of king of the hill and, and like what like these characters were were supposedly like the traumas they were Subjective motivated too. by and stuff yes and there's like all this really weird stuff that it's probably total coincidence but it's like it's like if you look at all these moments you know after peggy uh had her accent out of the airplane like there there's like severe evidence of like you know like like uh, brain damage and it affected her character and it's like really deep and it's like it's just a cartoon man it's supposed to be funny <laughs> like, but there's all this there's tons of stuff on there like that like a, there's I an know, a, I mean, like, an affair between peggy an affair between peggy and one of the neighbors supposedly that like hank may or may not have known about and that chris might be their their love child like there's all they're not chris bobby <laughs> i'm confusing Bobby's. shows again i was like uh, chris 
but um, it, it, it's so weird. Yeah, they never actually like clearly aired Bobby, and if they did, I might have missed an episode or two on what that was. But I know Bobby is actually, you know, Hank's actual son. I know that's for sure. It's just, it's like, it's like somebody like ran out of Game of Thrones like theories to make, and they're like, I'm gonna make theories about King of the Hill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start a new channel, and I'm gonna make three speculation videos a week about King of the Hill. That show's coming Ooh. back, you know. I hope it does. I no, that it is. They, they signed would, the deal. They signed the deal. Perfect, dude. Like, I want to see an older Hank and an older Bobby and obviously an older Peggy. Like, it's funny because, like, even when they were raising Bobby, like, Peggy and Hank had very, like, very old school ways of, like, raising and stuff like that. I remember, uh, I don't know who it was that was pregnant, um, but uh, Peggy went to go, like, help. And she was like, oh, um, whenever I wanted to put Bobby to sleep, I would just get a lemon and dip it in some, like, whiskey. So when he would suck on it, he would just get, like, sleepy. And, like, the entire room, like, looked at her like, what the hell's wrong with yeah. you? Did you just give a baby alcohol? But, it, like, I know what she meant. She didn't, like, say, like, oh, I just gave him boozy lemon. Like, it was just, like, enough for him to, like, just mellow him out. Yeah. Like, baby, baby levels him out, so... I don't if know I, if that's an actual real thing, though, to be honest. If I, I feel like if you say to, like anything about propane to like anybody in the United States, like selling propane and propane accessories, like every single person gets the reference. Like I have been I shocked exactly by how many people, about. how many people have understood that reference over the years when I make it, and they're I'm just like, no way, you know that show. There, like, it, it's interesting. People know who Hank Hill is because of that specifically. They've, they've <laughs> probably only heard him that, talk about it, it like once. That and that's it, yeah. That is it. Oh, I wish they really should. People really. Should. I wish they would put "Liking the Hill" like on Netflix or something like that. It's it's on I Hulu. It, I, I, was saying, I think it's on Disney. something, but I, I don't know what. Platform. It's on Hulu. Okay. You can never get me to subscribe to Hulu. We have it, and I never watch it ever. It's, My wife does. Mm -mm. She also watched an Uncharted movie and liked it. Just uh, saying. <laughs> she never watched it. She wanted to though. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I thought she did watch it. All right, let's rotate from King of the Hill to Silent Hill and the most <laughs> the greatest transition of all time. Oh, man. All the hills. After yes. this, we're going to Green Hill Zone. And the hills Sonic. have eyes. We're going to do that. My wife loves the hills have eyes, by the way. Those uh, are good movies, actually. I like them. <laughs> so uh, there was a major leak this week with some concept art slash screenshots uh, from Silent Hill. Did you see him? A new Silent no, Hill game? No, I didn't. Okay, so no. so first, uh, screenshots or art from a new Silent Hill game leaked out, and it's definitely real because Konami uh, DMCA'd the guy, and he had to remove them, which why would you do that if they were fake? So it's de definitely real. <clears throat> and then several well-placed game sources said there are at least, at least, three Silent Hill games currently in development, possibly four. What are you? Are you a Silent Hill fan? Are you a horror was fan a in general? Oh, I love horror. I mean, yeah. I never actually grew up with Silent Hills or any of the like any of that series specifically. I was very, 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 very looking forward to the Silent Hills with Guillermo del Toro, uh, mm -hmm. and as well as like the the Norman Reedus. I was, I still believe that was the biggest rob humanity has ever had. Yeah, and like I'm not saying that because I was so biased about the game, but the game was just. So it did everything so differently. Some people than, thought like, he should have won like do. Game of the Year awards. It really, honestly, like I, I don't doubt it. Like PT was an incredible experience, and it's just like that. That felt like the future of horror games. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, Resident Evil Village was dope, but like it was your average run of the mill, you know, linear like horror game. Like you go through the sequences, and that was it. Yeah. PT, like, just, you go through the sequences, but each sequence is so different, and it's so disturbing in so many different ways. Like, it was so perfect. Like, I hate that we were just robbed of that, because, uh, and, and that's that's the real corporate greed, where, where Konami comes in and just robs us of all that. But I, I'm off on my tangent. I, I love horror, and I was looking forward to that game, never really played any other Silent Hill game before that. I think, I think that game, so... It's funny that you say that because I totally think the Silent Hill games aren't bad. There's a couple of them probably that are like really good, but there's a lot of them that are really not good at all. <laughs> yeah, I there's, there's more really that are not ones. good. Yeah. And, and I kind of think that like, even now, like 
they have Hideo Kojima to thank for for PT because I feel like now more people want Silent Hill than like actually ha have like actual appreciation for the series because of just because of that because of PT and I do kind of wonder though now if Konami isn't going to fumble the bag really hard because they're apparently they're going all in if they're making three to four Silent Hill games that's like that's major investment you know what I mean and I kind of wonder if they're all going to come out game. and suck. What? Was it their last major video game? Was it Metal Gear Survive? Yeah. It was yeah, literally the zombie maybe the Metal Castlevania game. mobile game. Mm, Grimoire of Souls or whatever the heck it was I called. Don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what that is either. Metal Gear Survive was their first last AAA game, I would I would say. Yeah. Well, I mean, if they got like three to four games in, like I'd imagine maybe three out of the four is probably going to be like a slot machine <laughs> and the one game is actually going to be an actual game the the rumor is one of them is a, a reboot or a sequel one of them is a remake of silent hill 2 by bloober team which i don't know why you'd remake i remember silent that hill being 2, i remember that was a, a pretty long rumor like that that they got that deal in the middle of uh, yeah. making the medium yeah and then uh th this one is actually the most exciting to me and makes the most sense if it were me at this point making a new silent hill game that's what i would do it's going to be an episodic game because I could totally see like, and I don't mean exactly Telltale style, but that style of game working really well for Silent Hill, like an episodic horror game, like again, like close to Telltale style kind of thing. Like I could see that being having a lot of mind. Every episode ends with like a total mind. You know what word I'm going to use? Yeah. Um, I could see that working and not costing a ton of money and then taking the money you make from that and reinvesting it in the franchise you know, the next entry or whatever. That's probably what I would do. But I could I could see that working. I'm always down for like those episodic movies or, or games, not movies. I'm always down for that, but at the same time, like I definitely didn't I stopped caring a about it after I played The Walking Dead and the Stone. Yeah. And I oh, was God. like, yeah, this game was not really that good to be you honest. Way so too many like, of those. There was way too many Walking the walk, Dead The first games. two Walking Deads were great. I can understand wanting to wrap it up with The Walking Dead 3, but the first two were actually really good. The first one, still probably like one of my best gaming experiences in a very yeah. long time. The first one was good. I loved the first one. The second one, by the end of it, I was already sick of it. Yeah, by the by the time I got to the ending, I can tell you right now, episode two is the least memorable. I just remember seeing a very much more mature Clementine mm -hmm. trying to like take care of a baby at the same time. So I'm yeah. just like... This was, it, it's like the most typical Walking Dead trope. It's like frustration in like growing pains. And by the way, baby. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, like, baby. Literally every Walking Dead episode is, by the way, baby. <laughs> Legit. By the time like season one ended, or season three, I believe, of The Walking Dead ended, Lori had her baby. Boom, baby. And then like, by the time like Rick gets literally walking dead off the show boom baby michonne's pregnant <laughs> <laughs> michonne's pregnant i didn't even know that yeah in the show she's pregnant i don't think she's well, maggie pregnant, has a like, kid too right? right maggie and glenn have a, have a maggie's son. got a kid yeah yeah they do have a son so boom another baby <laughs> <laughs> that's the actual writer of the room like every time they're stuck they're like what are we gonna do guys and they're like they all look at each other baby <laughs> robert kirkman every time he sees like anything boom baby <laughs> Kirkman's a way better writer uh, than those hacks writing that television show. I actually like the show. I I can understand if people did not like season two. It is a lot slower, but I actually really like and enjoy the show. It's I'm not going to call it the most captivating show ever, but it has its moments where you there's something really about care. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there is something about it. Like the characters do a very good job of selling themselves. Yeah, the universe is like you're like oh I get it zombies I get it like everyone's out to get you but like each character is so refined. Like, oh my god, who is the one guy um that was from uh General Hospital or was it General Hospital? Like that was name. He holds the bat, but you're, it's his it's your favorite character. Negan. Yeah, Negan. Negan. Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Yeah. Like Negan's character, like he does such a good job of it. Oh like, yeah. And even He's... Rick. Even Rick is a great character. Oh, I yeah. Rick Andrea. carried that show. Yeah. I hated it. I hate Andrea with a passion. Cause like everybody did. Holy crap, everybody did. But it's because she, like that. I don't know what her name was, but she did such a good job representing somebody who you should hate. And I'm like, damn, dude, this yeah. this this show has good characters. Yeah, yeah. She was not. Yeah, especially towards the end, it was like I, I I'm not really sure. 
I think her death was supposed to be like a tragedy. When she died, it was like, thank God, you know? Like, thank God, yeah. <laughs> this is over. Thank God. She was like over there crying with Michonne, and they're like, oh, bestie, you can't wait to. I'm so sorry. I, I wanted to be there for you. And I'm like, get her off. Yeah. Yeet her off. I hated Andrea. Thank goodness. I'm with you there. And, and what's sad is, have you read the comics? I have not read the comics. Andrea read the is comics a great, are really is a, good. Andrea is a great. They are the comics. I, I highly recommend the comics to anybody. Andrea is a great character in the comics. Much more likable. She's like a mainstay, and uh, like she literally lasts probably three quarters of the series at, at the at a, if not longer. Um, spoilers, sorry, but yeah, I mean. Uh, there's some funny stories behind the production of the Walking Dead show too, like Dale being killed off, not because it was part of the plan, but because the actor was like rebelling, and they're like, "All right, you're done. Like we're killing you right here, right now in this scene." That was not planned. That was they had a disagreement with the actor, and the actor was not complying, and <laughs> they just killed him. That's what that's what uh, I read about uh, whenever they killed Carl off too, is because like. Uh, after they killed Carl off, Carl's like the guy, the kid's dad, it actually came out and said like, shocked. we were trying to like, we were we were trying to like get him to go to school because he wasn't able to meet school yeah. like requirements while working at the same time. So they literally fired my son because like he couldn't commit, but they wouldn't work around his schedule. He and I'm like, oh, Carl in the comics is amazing. I would say, and I, I don't mean to knock the guy because he was like legitimately like a kid. I would say that he was one of the weaker actors on the show. Like, no, agreed. He yeah, his moments, but oh well. Something about Lori and her offspring are just what just drive me absolutely up through a wall. I hated <laughs> Lori too. Yeah, yeah. She she was not a likable character either. Coral, that was famous. <laughs> Coral. Uh, sorry. Let's Coral. jump. To, uh, since we're doing horror, um, did you see the trailer for the Resident Evil Netflix series? Yes. Uh... What do you think? <laughs> I, it looks good. I just don't want it to be Resident Evil. Why cannot? Why can we not have a biblically accurate Resident Evil well, anything on like it, the silver screen? Wasn't the most recent movie the uh, Resident Evil one and two combined? Uh, I think the movie was just terrible altogether. Well, I didn't that watch movie it. Was, I was say, did you see it? I don't know. No, I didn't see it, but it clearly didn't resonate with Resident Evil fans. Like the budget looked like it was made using like the same budget that they used for Halo Four and Dawn. <laughs> Yeah, for the movie, the more serious yeah. movie. Yeah, I agree. The budget yeah. looked way too small. This series, though, looks like it has a big budget. This Netflix series. Yeah, it looks like it's got a great budget. Like, everything about it looks great. And all CG like, you looks what? good. CG looks good. The, like, the acting seems pretty up to par, too. But it's just like, oh, it's not even Resident Evil anything correct at this point. So is we'll it, see. It's, isn't one of the characters like Wesker or like some type of character related to I, Wesker? It, I don't remember actually. I I remember seeing it and I'm like this looks good, but like I just I, based off of what I saw, I was like none of this is universe or timeline accurate, and like there's changes to it. New Raccoon City in the UK. Like why did how did old Raccoon City just <laughs> move to the UK? Like, is that like Reach fuck? City? <laughs> yeah, I guess it's Reach City. Dude. The the, the pro- oh. my reaction to it when I watched the trailer. I used to be a hardcore Resident Evil fan when I was like, I'd say like my high school years. Like, you know, like 14 through 18. Resident Evil was one of my favorite franchises. And like Resident Evil 4 had just come out around then too. So like obviously amazing. Is that a dog or a baby? Boom baby. Boom oh, baby. Yep. It's cereal, isn't it? No, this is actually I think a miniature game. It's like oh, some Marvel. I thought it was a thing. box of Golden Crisp. No, no, it's a box to like raise my iPad up to oh. hopefully get me a better <laughs> angle. That's not this crazy like light. <laughs> it didn't do anything different i think it made it worse actually it did it put a glare on the screen it's okay let me see if i can get in front of the light a little bit better yeah but i look so off <laughs> hey yeah there you go i like that that's pretty it's pretty good okay we'll just run with it we'll mute it <laughs> all right um I mean, I, I'm split on it because on one hand, I was like, you know, the production of this this trailer actually looks pretty good, like the, the action and like the CG and stuff. And but I'm, I'm kind of at the point with Resident Evil where like, unlike Halo, like I don't really care about the story anymore. Like I've totally given up on it anyway from the story perspective. So I'm like, if this can at least be like a entertaining 
and like uh you know just just really fun uh resident evil series like i'm down like at, at this point i'm all right yeah. This the Resident Evil storyline's so wonky anyway and nonsensical that it's I don't feel like they can really murder it like they are with the Halo series. You know what I mean? I mean like even when it came to like the Resident Evil movies, like that was way like you know, I say this, I was like, I just wish this uh this new show wasn't was at least bibl- biblically accurate. You know, the 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 movies were nowhere like bibli- biblically no. accurate either, but they but what, they were what wildly they successful. Really well with those, yeah, the reason that they did good is because they were able to actually sell a unique and good alternate storyline. Yeah, which made sense. Also, I mean, like we all know, there was an evil timeline is a hellscape. But like at this point, you know, when you put it into a movie, like those movies did a good job of telling that timeline, those characters, and that storyline. It still shocks so, me to this day that those movies became as big as successes as they were because they did. They made a lot of money, and they made like five or six yeah. of them because like. A, when the first one came out, like, video game movies and stuff were still, like, basically, like, jokes. You know, like, they, they weren't yeah. a thing. Uh, the Resident Evil franchise wasn't, like, ginormous. And then C, it didn't have star power. It had Mia, whatever her name is, Jova Jova Jovovich, who's the wife of the, of, of the director. Like, but somehow they became, like, massive. Like, they were huge. Because they were cool, man. Like, People, I think what the first Resident Evil movie did so well is that it became such a big staple. It was like one of the like best production like video game movies we had at the time. At the time, yeah. Like, yeah, and then like you know as it evolved, like you know people were like, I like the first one enough. Resident Evil Apocalypse had Kill Switch Engage in it. I should absolutely watch it. <laughs> um, and then like just the movies kind of like after Resident Evil Apocalypse and then went into Extinction. Extinction like shit got out of control. It was like the Matrix. Um, yeah, it was like the Matrix. Things got a little bit out of control at that point. But, you know, they were still good enough. Like, they had still pretty awesome budget on there. And, you know, you could hate it or love it. You know, it wasn't like the Transformers or like Fast Furious series or anything like that. But it had continuity to it, at least. How was that new uh, Monster Hunter movie? Same director. It's the same star. Dude, that game, that movie, like, just disappeared, dude. Like, I remember they announced <laughs> really it. Did. And, like, I literally did not see anything it's after out. the announcement. It's been out for, like, for like I know a year. it's been out, but after that, like I was just like, I, you, you literally could you just mentioned this to me, and I forgot that it even existed. It was so bad, it. I think that it like literally like got like wiped from existence, like Mandela effect, just like <laughs> gone. Berenstein, Berenstein. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> Monster Hunter movie. <laughs> what what Monster Hunter movie? Resident Evil Four is amazing. Uh, and the thing is though, I think what's cool about Resident Evil is there's so many good Resident Evil games, like. Everybody can have like their own favorite pretty much and not be wrong unless Resident Evil 5 is your favorite, then you're wrong, but or six. But <laughs> there's a lot of other valid choices. I think at this point Resident Evil 5 shines significantly better in the light compared to six. Yeah, well, yeah. But what one of my friends it really bothers me. He's played every Resident Evil game and he swears up and down that five is the best. And I'm like, you just every other opinion I you have so- is invalid. I think a lot of like diehard like Resident Evil fans would say Resident Evil Four is the best. Then it's Resident Evil Two, and I actually do think people have said like Resident Evil Five is like a top five game. If you put Four and Two before, I don't really care what comes after that. Then it's like personal preference, pretty much. Like yeah, I, Five wasn't a bad game. It just it's not like a masterpiece. It's, it's it was like five. it answered a lot of questions though. You know that gave people like a lot of understanding for things, right? It was like also where they where started the to jump the shark. Chris Redfield <laughs> yeah. punching boulders in the final punching fight. Yeah. And Wesker falling into the lava like Terminator or something. It's so interesting to see like Chris, Chris Redfield's like evolution as a character from like the game, like mm. in the game, built like me, an actual like an actual <laughs> twink. <laughs> and then like here you are in like Resident Evil Village and the dude is an actual skyscraper have and you? would probably steal your wife. Have we ever <laughs> hide your kids? Hide Quite your literally, wife. He's, he, no, he actually does steal your kid and your wife. In Resident That's Evil. true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have we ever had the conversation about how Resident Evil, uh, Capcom, every single game, I swear to God, look at it. Resident Evil, Devil May Cry, they ch- their characters change so there's zero consistency in how they design their characters, their facial structure, the color of their eyes, nothing. Their characters look every time Leon S. Kennedy appears, he looks totally different. Chris Redfield, totally different. Jill Valentine, 
totally different. I, I, I'm Dante every single game. Totally different. And it's like, hey, you know, wild. we don't we don't complain about Dante, and it's you know, Dante be looking fine. I mean, like red wine. I guess what's amazing is like they change it every single time, but the characters still manage to be like well received and loved person. and badass. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess it is what it is. I guess, but. I, I'm glad. I think they changed Redfield at least in Village from from Biohazard because he did not have a cool look in Seven. He looked like such a it was weird average yeah. Californian surfer guy. Yeah, who would you know swear up and down in and out is better than like Five Guys or something like that. Well, and now they've got him in Five. He was like jacked to all hell, like arms like literally like like bursting yeah. out of. You know, and then in seven, he was like, like you said, like way, way, way slimmed down. And then in eight, he was, he was like, like jacked oh. again. Yeah, I did not like his seven look. I remember like being excited that Chris was there at the very end. I was like, oh, dude, that is cool as hell. I was not expecting that. I didn't expect actual continuity to happen in this game because it was such a left field game. He got a DLC left field story. too. He got a whole DLC. Yeah. I, I played the DLC. The DLC was, uh, it was good. It was, it okay, was like, yeah. wow. No. Yeah. I mean, it's just finishing up like, you know, killing that other guy that's yeah. about it so the sun yeah that's going to sun there's more re7 uh, i definitely do miss biohazard biohazard is probably like one of my top you know uh horror games I, i've played in a while it really bothers me and it always has that the resident evil remake uh that originally came out on gamecube does not get more love like that game was incredible like it, Actually, it holds up so well it. oh my god you should i think it's on steam um, but it's so freaking good. Like it, it totally rethought survival horror at the time, and the graphics were amazing and still hold up because it's like pre-rendered, like hand-drawn environments mm-hmm. and stuff. And it's oh, pretty it's, cool. It's so good. It's I highly recommend it. Resident Evil oh, Zero yeah. gets forgotten to too. It. That was a weird one, but that was that wasn't bad yeah. really. It wasn't amazing, but. Well, at least uh, Resident Evil fans aren't Halo fans with their with their TV shows and their movies. So we'll get there. Actually, let's they, just they, do it. They at least they at least expect the show to suck. <laughs> See, <laughs> let's just do it. It's next on the agenda everywhere. What did you think of this week's episode of Halo, Jay? <laughs> I made a I made a comment in the car on my way here, and I said, you know. It's kind of bigoted for uh, you know the the Paramount TV show to just turn an asexual character into someone who just has sex. I feel like that was very disrespectful. I because like, oh god, so bad. It's not even. It's not. It's literally not Halo. This is so, not a Halo. For those of you who don't know, that. for those of you who don't know, Master Chief, the hero of the Halo franchise, this week, uh, had sex with the villain of the show uh who obviously he should not trust anybody with a fraction of a brain cell would not would not trust this person it was it's like okay at this point it's like we can argue it already we already know this is not a halo like canonical like blah 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 i get it i get it let's put that aside all right this is just so poorly written that you just for some reason have to somehow include sex in your show for the sake of it being sex at this point it's so dumb at this point, I actually think that that and I, I said this beforehand. There was like, no, 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 no. Like, don't jump on him. When the showrunner said before the show came out, you know, we didn't look at the games and we didn't want to feel, you know, limited by the fact that our story was based on on video games. That said to me right off the bat that those are like fighting words. That, that's like, OK, I think that the story of video games is garbage at this point looking at this series like it almost seems like the showrunners the writers the directors actively hate like halo the halo fans and and everything about like like how did these people get put in charge of this it blows my my freaking mind because every button they could possibly push to try to piss off uh halo fans or not only like do something different which is totally fine. I'm totally okay with people taking creative liberties and doing their own thing mm-hmm. and uh, either fleshing out something that wasn't previously fleshed out in this story or like like The Walking Dead, for example. They make twists that aren't in the comics just to kind of surprise viewers. That's fine. But they are just like 
literally pissing in the face of anybody who likes Halo. And I I yeah. don't understand. And I'm actually going to take it a step further and, and say that Microsoft and Xbox and 343 absolutely should have. I know they're not responsible for this, but they should have exercised more creative control on this and at least made sure that this was going to be something that would would complement the franchise because it absolutely does not i disagree with that i actually believe halo like i believe 343 and microsoft want something like this i they might dude i i think they actually do because like with their i mean it's a huge success entries, with their two staple entries with halo and gears and I mentioned this to a friend, and I was just like, Microsoft wants to for- wants people to forget that these games were made, and that every time, like for every game that they release, they clearly want to show some sort of interest in just removing everything that happened prior, happened prior, and trying to tell their version of it. Like Microsoft prides itself way too much on creating its own anything. Like, they, like Microsoft does not like being recognized as like the operating system that everybody else goes to because every other software powers windows they hate that they absolutely do they've said that before people who have left the windows team are like yeah we have people who are upstairs saying like we don't we don't pride ourselves on the fact that you know other people's software is power ours Mm -hmm. so in this case like for games i'm like sold on the idea that they do not want to recognize these previous titles with tables one through reach and gears one through three they want. They bought this IP and said, "Great, we need to make this product our own now. We cannot mm-hmm. let it be the previous predecessors." I mm-hmm. think that they genuinely want these games to die the way that they bought them. And now that we have, you know, Halo's four through like Infinite, Infinite is a is a it's on the track back to good things, right? Mm-hmm. But four, five, you know, they took way too many, and even Halo three, Halo Anniversary, like too many liberties to try and make this theirs Mm -hmm. and like every time and when it shows that they did that nobody liked it and it killed a lot of people's trust gears four and five gears four kind of like a weird way to reintroduce characters redo the game entirely you know we'll give it a shot people liked it for a little bit but then like gears five comes out and they absolutely just killed the game entirely Mm -hmm. because they wanted to make it their product i am like sold on the idea microsoft is not like i think it's an easy trap I think as a creative person, it's an easy trap to fall in. Like, like you don't want to, like, you don't come on board usually to, you know, oh, well, my goal is to just continue what, what was done. You know, you're going to sit there and you're going to think, like, I'm going to make it bigger and I'm going to make it better and I'm going to prove myself, yeah. you know, if you're like the person writing it or whatever, you know, uh, it, it's an easy trap to fall in, I think. And it, it happens with sequels too, and in, in movies, you know, like uh, you mm-hmm. know, the first the first one is really good. Uh, now, for, but now for the second one, we're gonna do blah 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 blah, blah and then you lose like what made it great to begin with, you know? Yeah, and that it, sucks. And clearly, like you know, the gaming industry and like the way we like you know think and focus on all those creative freedoms that they had is so so much more controlled. I do believe that there are. And I'm not going to say diversity here. That doesn't bother me. I wanted to say what bothers me is that there's forced integration of expectations you want in your product whenever it's coming from people who have no idea what makes the product valuable to begin with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll go out on a limb and say, you know, out loud, I think Bonnie Ross is a good example of somebody who just doesn't care about like what happens. Because she said, I think that Halo is a big enough universe that can rival like Marvel, Disney characters and stuff like that. And like she wants to turn Halo into a consumer product so badly, and that's where we see like products of like the Halo TV show come into play, where it's just like, yep, let's let's create more consumers, let's create a product that's sellable, uh, or at least what we think is strategically sellable, like when we compare it to like previous previous successors from like Game of Thrones. And clearly, like you know, the last episode was just like the final nail in the coffin that just says, yep, we just want to sell you a product. We don't give a shit about it. Well, that's, I totally agree with what Maz just said too, is that it's like the creators of the show, like literally read cliff notes, uh, like, like which with the cliff notes version of halo is going to sound like any other sci-fi series, basically. I mean, there's a, it's a lot more deep and intricate than that, but the cliff notes version would be like, Oh, you know, super soldier kidnapped at, at birth, you know, made to made into super soldier child, you know, goes through horrible things, becomes savior of humanity, blah, 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 blah. And, like, they've got that. Like, they did put that stuff in there. But, 
Like it, it's just such a like I literally I, I did not watch episode eight and I'm done. Like I once I and it, it's not like it's not even the fact that because everybody's fixating on the fact that, oh, you know, Master Chief had sex and blah, 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 blah. And that's wrong. I don't really care about that. It's the fact that they've taken his character and they have totally forgot like all the things that make Master Chief a great character. They're gone. Like none of it. None of it is there. And they've replaced yeah, it with like all of the events of this series so far, like the bad things that are happening are literally all direct consequences of Master Chief. Like he's 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 like he's almost the villain of the series. Like like the the, art, the artifact got the artifact got hijacked because Master Chief saved that other Spartan. And now Reach is going to get glassed because Master Chief couldn't keep his pants on. And like it's like where, <laughs> where, where did you forget to make the main character of your show a hero? Like like how did that happen? How did that make it through the writing room? Like they 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 somehow wrote him to already be a hero and nobody knows why but never explained it at all they never explain it it's stupid and like they got the quan ha thing going on which nobody cares about because quan ha is the andrea of the show no one likes her she's (laughs) stupid and so is her story and like i i I think that they're writing an interesting thing into it because there's there's some really cool at least background evidence that they looked at the books in terms of like what happens with like the humanity lineage post the halo effect but like in this case it's just so dumb it, like it still doesn't make sense and i don't know man like the the, the uh, I, I i just want this show to be done with and what kind of like grinds my gears a lot is people who say that like this show are quick that like whenever they say they like the show and it's just like bro you really must not like anything good at all if you really like this show i constantly whatever the people that do say that and like let's i can't disregard we can't say that uh, by viewership numbers this show is a success but i I always say tell tell me what characters you like like what like what characters do you like uh, and and why there's no likable characters in this show what do you like about the show you know what do you like about the story you can't really give me anything like there's 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 nothing well they i I think if i could belly devil's advocate the people who would say they like it let's just say they like because She's a daredevil. She's a person who's like trying, who took out her emotional thing. And now she's like this character that is just like, you know, getting to learn all these kinds of things. And it's just like, okay, but that's more of a tool, a mechanism to drive the story a little bit differently because. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. It's a mechanism. Like if she hadn't done that, then Chief would have had, would have just secured the artifact and Mm -hmm. it would never would have gotten stolen. Mm -hmm. Like that's all she's written for honestly i'll say it like a lot i think so far miranda keys and the rest of solar team are written so well and the reason why they're written so well is because they don't have motives like oh they have motives but they don't have like clearly written out motives as yeah. compared to like chief or I mean, yeah also i actually think halsey's doing a good job because she's halsey like she's played by what's her name she's actually done really well i think that those the are the good things pretty about one-dimensional it. i mean yeah and like that's all that's all we need. We don't need to like build around their emotions. Like, I, like if you're a Halo fan, you already know no one gives a shit about the emotional aspect of like yeah. why Chief does what he does. We care about the emotional connection between him and Cortana Chief because does what he does. You are, he's the hero. That's why. Like he's that. That's hero. basically you can sum it up in that. Like this is the hero of humanity. That's it. Yeah, but I will say at that last episode though, the fight scene was pretty dope. Like it went pretty hard. Um, like chief was out of his out of his uh emulator and you know he was up against two other spartans and then kai came in to kind of like do a little bit of additional damage which i thought was kind of bs but again like it, she was trapped and then she managed to get out of it which you expect she's a spartan at least at the, at the very least they don't like treat these spartans as a joke yeah um in terms of like what they're capable of doing because the the fight scene for that was actually pretty dope i will not lie and like the rest of silver team they don't have motives like we don't you don't care what they do is way more important than what they're talking about right one of my biggest problems that i have with it is everything that it's trying to do or like like none of the themes of it and this isn't a problem i'm just stating it out loud none of the themes that the show has or points or whatever are are unique to halo they're pretty g- general storytelling and specifically usually sci-fi storytelling themes but the show beats it over beats you over the head with it so hard like like you know like like the 
the UNSC is is evil. You know, the evil fascists in the background, and you know, like like it like really nails that to you, like, and it does it in such a generic way, and it does it with every yeah. single story point it has. So like when people say like. Oh, I really like this aspect of the story or that aspect. I can point to like a hundred things, like a hundred different games or shows or movies or books that that do that a hundred times better. Like like they do that that style of character, like whatever they're trying to, you know, connecting with your your emotions or or what it is to be human. There's a thousand mm-hmm. different different things that do that way better and way more subtly. And like it's just it's so ham fisted and generic. You mean, Mary, you don't touch objects and immediately have some euphoric experience where you have your <laughs> memories of a lost childhood to like just drive the rest of your like action after that? Like, For no you don't reason think that whatsoever. That doesn't happen. For no reason whatsoever. For no yeah. reason whatsoever. Yeah. Like you don't have like a teddy bear that does that to you or something. No. And then and then uh, you know, you don't you don't uh you don't take you don't Take those things That's... and then hand it hand it all over to the to the enemy faction, which hasn't mm-hmm. really been shown to actually even be a threat really through eight episodes. Like we don't really still really don't know why it's like a big deal. You know, it's also kind of like annoying how quick uh whatever her name is, uh Cammy, well, I don't know what the hell her name is. Isn't it McKee? Um McKee, there we go. Mackie, Sorry about McKee. That. Thank you. Mackie, McKee, it's McKee. Like McKee just like develops romantic like emotions for chief despite the fact that nothing has really happened he <laughs> took her out for a walk the second he literally walked the dog and then like went to go bang it it's so, it's so <laughs> this... bad to say out loud but that's what happened i was so upset like they had that vision where they were both on halo you know and bear in mind this, this is supposed to be like the, the most well-trained, most, like, the best weapon humanity has. You know, like, he's a super, literally a super soldier. The superest of super soldiers. And this is, this is, by the way, nobody, I know they have questioned it, but nobody is really questioning, oh, wow, that's kind of weird. After they took the artifact, they ejected this woman onto the ground right in front of us. Like, I know they have <laughs> referenced it, but that's kind of like a bad sign. And, but, but so nobody, Master Chief, you know, this greatest weapon that humanity has, he gets this vision with this McKee or whatever, and they're on Halo. And the first thing he does is he reaches up and he like touches her face, like very touches romantically. Face, yeah. like, Why? Why would you do this? Like, there's like a million different types of ways. Like, if the if the I would be like, looking like, around, oh, like, oh my god, like where am I? Not like touch face. Yeah, sexually. Ra- that random, was a pretty random, sexual touch. random girl from Covenant ship. Like, what the heck? Is that bourbon? Ooh. Ooh. Oh man. Ooh. That gave me goosebumps right there. <laughs> um no, it, it was so bad. Like I, I they could have like conveyed like, oh, Chief wanted to know if what he was feeling was real because he was in a euphoric moment where clearly he's physically not supposed to be there, but he's like, Man, I'm here. Let me touch something. He quite literally just could have touched grass. He could have touched the <laughs> ground. He, he could have <laughs> done anything. Grass. Oh god. And it's like Or again, he could have like said something from... to her like like hey like you you see in this, you know, like uh, like anything. And like the way that she develops feelings for him is like so bad. Like, oh, I had like a childhood friend who you know, we don't understand their relationship together, but they clearly lived in a junkyard <laughs> and <laughs> they're about to kiss like as children and like obviously like she hasn't let go of that for some reason. I saw um, somebody tear apart uh that whole scene and set up to of like w- like why in within the halo universe it makes no sense for uh there there to have been child labor like a child labor camp in a junkyard like how that whole setup makes no sense 500 years in the future yeah Ugh, this is a bad show well the next episode is uh the last episode is this week and um I called it, dude. Like episode three or episode four, you're on it. I was like, you know what's gonna happen? Since we haven't even gone to Halo yet, despite that's what the fucking show is called, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna see Reach being glassed, and then they're gonna do a Halo Halo Reach on us at the very end of the credits. We're gonna see Pillar of Autumn, and then they're gonna be like, "What's that?" And we're just gonna see like one third of the Halo ring. <laughs> yeah, that, that the final shot will definitely be the Halo ring, hundred percent, no doubt about it. 
All right, let's move. Ooh. Let's... Ooh. Oh my god, dude, that's so strong. Let's do. Uh, yeah, it is. Let's do. Uh, you hear the gears collection rumors? It's been rumored yeah, for a I long time, real. but yeah. I hope it's real, and I hope to God Coalition isn't working on it. And if they are working on it, I hope it's just the CGI effects. <laughs> How, how how many how what what gears games do you think they're gonna put in this? Uh, one through judgment. Think so? No four. Yeah. Why would they put four? I don't know. Just asking. I want your opinion. No, no, they're not gonna put four. I think one through judgment. I think they'll add judgment um campaign, but I don't think they'll like add the multiplayer or the horde mode for it or anything like that. I think, as a matter of fact, I don't even think they're gonna add horde modes to it. If they do add a horde mode, it'll probably be like gears three because that one was the best mode. and. Yeah, just one horde mode. It'll probably gear, be Gears 3 horde mode. Um, I hope it's real. And if it's like, honestly, I wouldn't mind if it was the same team that worked on Halo 2 Anniversary. I would be pretty stoked for that. Wasn't that Saber, though? Or was it not? Yeah, Saber. It was Saber Interactive. Saber's owned by somebody else now. Uh, wasn't it? It is. What the heck? Embracer. Which I don't, they may still be able to do it. <clears throat> I don't see why not. I mean, like, get paid. I mean, clearly. Clearly, three for three didn't make Halo. It was them plus you know a million other contractors and vendors yeah. <laughs> that made Halo Infinite. <laughs> yeah, it, no, it could but happen. I, I'm excited. Uh, I'm I'm pretty close to the Gears community. As much as like I'm a bigger Halo fan person, um, I would say that I'm probably closer to a lot more of the Gears mm-hmm. like content creator team, like King Abs, King Abs, uh, K- uh, Kiamin, Kiamin, I don't know how to say his name, uh, Neon Velocity. Like those guys are really big. Like gears trendsetters and conversationalists and you know they've they've done like a lot of echoing about like gears uh phoenix collection and i hope it's real actually i really want it to be real it'd be great to see gears show an effort to say we want to go back to what gear what made gears gears i would just i i'm i'm down for any reason to play gears uh, pretty much i mean i you know good things to came out of mcc so i'm definitely to get the gears gang back together and and play those those games again, I'm hundred percent there. I mean, like gears two and three also run sixty frames, uh, locked at like native four K with HDR. Uh, mm. Well, not native HDR. It's like whatever Xbox Series consoles push out. That's like their whatever HDR version. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I hope I hope to God that we can at least see some like really cool improvements on top of the multiplayer because that's really what drives gears home yeah, is the multiplayer sure. um but uh it, it, people you can still like get on a lobby and play gears 2 right now with those new changes and stuff like that but the problem is is that the servers are so old and archaic yeah literally like ran on a hamster wheel post so advantage. like you're gonna have like remember 80, those days yeah you're gonna have host it, advantage that's right yeah. gears one host advantage was like one of the most ridiculous things i ever saw in a video game like you could <laughs> blow somebody in half with a nasher from literally like like three times the distance that it would actually take for anybody else yeah i'm excited to go back to gears 3 gears 3 was probably like the the, the game where people were kind of like more not interested in gears 3 but that's where i started playing a lot of gears multiplayer and i had a lot of fun I remember being such a raging maniac uh, whenever I got, you know, one tapped by a sawed off uh, shotgun. I remember this sawed Because that thing was stupid busted, dude. It was so cheap. Yeah. Like, I can't believe I liked it. And then, like, once it started happening to me, I'm like, all right, you know what? This is a problem. Yeah, I mean, I liked it at first, too. I remember, like, loving it. And then, like, I same, I had the same exact experience. Like, people were destroying, like, everybody was just destroying people. And I was like, all right, yeah, this is bad. This, this can't, yeah. can't be good. What about you? Gears, Phoenix, maybe, hopefully. What do you what do you think it'll come out this year? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I think it'll be I'm thinking this is like an August, September release. Like it's it's just a collection. It can't be oh well, we saw how bad Master Chief collection <laughs> went, but at the beginning. Um but yeah, I, I between somebody else probably doing it and yeah. They're they're gonna have to fill that void too now of you know you know they're gonna have I I don't think I don't think they're going to be in panic because my guess is they have quite a few like decent quality, not games the size of Starfield or, or Redfall, but other games like the GoldenEye remake is rumored uh, to be coming, you know, this at the Xbox conference. There's going to be a lot yeah. of stuff in there, I think. And I think like I'm stoked to see Indiana Jones Gears collection for... and uh, yeah. um, there's, there's uh, going to be a lot of games at... at their conference. The, the conference is going to rock. I'm I'm pretty, pretty confident. 
somebody made a really cool um, observation and said that if Gears was to be given like given to somebody else that's no longer the Coalition because of the poor way that Coalition has been handling Gears, that it should be the same studio that makes Wolfenstein that takes over Gears, mm, which that would be. Interesting. I think that actually makes a lot of sense in a lot of ways. That I haven't seen them do a third person game, so we'll see how they do with this Indiana Jones game because they're the, that's the same team that makes Machine Wolfenstein games. is making this Indiana game. Yeah, yeah, that would so be. Interesting. I'm interested. I hope. I hope it'll be pretty cool. You think but, we're gonna get like an actual indie game, or do you think we're gonna get like some weird spin off spin off? Indiana, of Jones, Indiana Jones, you mean? I yeah, dude, I'm not excited for that. I think that's I so I'm sorry, Indiana Jones fans. I think that's a waste of machine uh machine games talent. Like there's those Wolfenstein games are freaking great. Like they they brought that franchise back to life. It was dead, and they they did their own thing with it while also you know honoring the past. And I've heard that they're they're involved with the new Quake too. So I I don't know how many resources they have, but uh, you, if did you play Phantom Abyss or do you know what Phantom Abyss is the Devolver game where you get like a whip and it was like procedurally generated? No. That if you want an Indiana Jones style game, like I'm telling you, let me let me give you the concept. So Phantom Abyss, published by Devolver, it's first person. Every single level you go into or temple is procedurally generated and there's other people running it uh basically at the, at the same time as you and you can see their ghosts like like their their phantoms you know going through who people who have died in the map before you or on that so only one person ever can finish the temple and you've got a whip and you can do you know you can latch on and swing and you know there's all sorts of par- it's basically like parkour but an indiana jones mm-hmm. style temples and it is it went way under the radar. It came out last year, and it's really freaking good and fun. Like, it's really good. Oh, it's an Evolver game. Of course it went under the radar, and of course it's great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's kind of their jam. Yeah. I've been really wanting to play uh, Trek to Yori. Apparently that game's pretty dope, actually. I heard it's good. It was at PAX, but I didn't get to play it. But I heard it's good. It just came uh, out like a I week saw or some... ago. Yeah, it came out like a week and a half ago. I saw like some weird Xbox Stan like make a tweet saying who uh, how to play um, Ghost of Tsushima on an Xbox, <laughs> and it was that game. I'm like, this isn't a W, bro. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really different kind of game. <laughs> you don't say side scroller. Uh... <laughs> but I heard it's really good. Another Devolver game. Fall Guys, by the way, how, we don't really need to dis- discuss this that much, but um, Fall Guys going free to play in June. Another Devolver game. Man, you know what's funny? Uh, usually I only ever learn about like these games through a podcast. And for once at work, somebody actually gave me this information on a call between like multiple people. And they're like, oh, Fall Guys is going free to play. And I'm like, <laughs> that's information that y'all typically don't have. Who told you? <laughs> it was all over. Yeah. It- I, I hadn't opened up Twitter until like that call basically had happened. Yeah. I like, I've been I touching like Fall grass, Guys. Hanging out with friends for once. So. For once, I actually didn't open up Twitter. Oh, I've been living with like roommates that I, we, we don't like share the same interests and everything like that. And yeah, I don't like to hang out with them that much because I'm either doing something else or working. So yeah, that's good once in a while. Need that. <laughs> uh, Maz and the Twitter, uh, the Nemesis Twitter chat suggested a, a, a feel good game recommendation because. Uh, apparently there was a lot of bad things happening and, and down and out feelings today. You got you got a feel good game, a go to feel good game to recommend to people. Um, I mean we talked about it before, but Gone Home is That's definitely exactly a what I was game. Say. <laughs> that Gone Home is like the most feel good game I've had to play in a long time. You're not sure if um, it's gonna be a feel good game until a certain point. Yeah, but... yeah, it, it kind of feels like it's a horror game, and so it's kind yeah. of tension, but it's, there's no horror. It's so interesting, like, whenever they promote that game, like, in the clips, they, they, they showed that closet where they have, like, the satanic circle in there. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, like, it just raised questions, like, what the hell kind of game is this? The JFK and then, like, stuff, the conspiracy. It, yeah, and I'm like, where the hell are we? But, yeah, I, I, no, Gone Home is definitely that. I agree. I agree. Honestly, Ori. Ori is a good, uh, good feel game. I never finished Ori. God, I envy you so much i would kill to like replay ori for the first time ever again in my life i played it quite I, a bit but i didn't finish it ori one was really good but ori in the will of the wisps like ori two is 
like a masterpiece game. Mm-hmm. Like it is really, really good. And I hate I I don't hate I don't want to use that word I don't want to make it feel bad but I really wish he would finish it like Ori two was like a phenomenal game and another one of those games that's just under the radar oh yeah is one it was an Xbox game two uh, it's a platformer so like mm-hmm. it doesn't really get a lot of attention but no Ori and the Will of the Wisps is probably like one of my favorite games of the last generation and Ori was one of the first games that actually got compared to Dark Souls and lived up to like that comparison because every game got compared to Dark Souls there for a while it was like oh what what you know this game from dark souls but every kind of is actually the platformer of like the dark souls platformer in a way i feel like hollow knight is probably more of like a dark souls i own that but i've never played ori it's cool i mean like once you play ori first you you kind of like get this like really interesting refined experience i'm not saying that hollow knight is not refined but you Mm -hmm. could tell there is a significant difference between how the platformers are controlled yeah, and you can see budget significantly in a platformer compared to most games, mm-hmm. um, and at least a triple A budget. And I'm not calling. I don't think Hollow Knight had like a triple A budget, but no. it definitely it did enough to like warrant like really good fan base around it. So yeah, I've only heard good things. Yeah, I've been wanting to play Hollow Knight, but I just, I just haven't done it. Uh, I'm like level 98 or 99 right now in Elden Ring, so I'm pretty close to beating it. I just entered the land of the giants or the mountains of the giants. I forgot which one of what it's called. And after that, I'm going to finally beat Tunic. <laughs> I, I pretty much stopped Elden Ring. I'm level 60-something, and I just, just kind of fell off. I got to the part where um, I found that old man sitting in a chair, and he's like, I don't know, you need to start the festival or something like that. And I like didn't know what to do, and I was like, I, I accidented the game, oh. and I haven't gotten back since. Yeah, no, you're going to... That's that's where you're going to fight one of the major bosses. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I've. That's where I am currently. I do well. Never mind. I was gonna they call it a about. festival, but it, it's just quite literally a bloodbath. <laughs> is what it's, yeah, it's what it's going <laughs> to turn into. Maybe I do want to play now. Uh, all right, games coming out this week. Supposedly, there's a new Arma game stealth dropping tomorrow. Uh, v Rising, the uh, Stunlock Studios vampire survival game, MMO ish, kind of, kind of like Valheim, but it looks like Valheim, Valheim, and Diablo three together and Vampires. Valheim, Diablo 3 and um Lost Ark. Yeah. Put together is what it looks like. Uh Apex Mobile, Dolmen and Vampire the Masquerade Swan Song. I don't know which one that is. I think that's like a Isn't it like a Telltale style game? I don't I don't remember to be honest. It's not But st- I have been playing Vampire Masquerade Blood Hunt a lot lately. Yeah. What do you think of it? I like it. It's got yeah. a lot of opportunity. It needs some refinement though, but like yeah. I like it a lot. Yeah. The only things I hate is the ping issues and like whatever you get and it happens a lot more than it should but like you get like stuck on like this weird thing on like a wall and you will like frame by frame just fall to the ground and it's <laughs> devastating and it, it messes you up so bad um in like the lack of like weapons on the map i feel like there isn't enough loot yeah. drop on there it's a constant crossbows and i'm like jesus christ i don't want to yeah. use this i can't use it I, my problem, I think it's a really good game that has tons of potential too, and I'm glad to see it being a success. But I played it so much already through like the early <laughs> access, the alpha, the beta, like all that stuff, like leading up to this point that I feel like I'm already like, like I've seen everything this game has to offer right now. You know what I mean? Like, I and I kind of that's kind of one of the unfortunate downsides of the early access world that we live in is like now that the game's having its moment, I'm already like. Yeah, I, I bet you're on to the that. next thing. <laughs> yeah, so um, I do think it's well, good. I'm excited. I'm excited for it for work also because we are, we are building programming around it, and I've I've had the pleasure of like connecting to people within the community who have been through the alpha and have mm-hmm. been there since like day one development, and um, they're really excited to see what we're gonna do at work too. So we'll have an announcement for that tomorrow. So I'm excited. I for, absolutely for what we can do with think, that. By the way, it's a huge missed opportunity that it doesn't have executions, and I keep saying this to people. Like with vampires and executions, you should be able to come up with like like customizable like when you what is it? What's the word? Do they call it die? die Diablerize. Uh, yes, you you should hundred percent be able to unlock like microtransaction. I don't care. Different, you know. Uh, and I'm and I'm I said this to people like no no it doesn't need that. I'm like why would you not do that? Like it, it's it's such like a customizable like your own style of execution. No, I agree. I think that like they need to do a better job with a character creation tool that doesn't oh, involve time. like a hairstyle being in the battle pass. I think that's incredibly lame. Yeah. 
but I, I am glad that, that there's a battle royale game out there that lets me like customize this deep. Yeah, and I just PUBG lets you do that too. Uh, Speaking of PUBG, actually, it's got a Neon Genesis Evangelion uh, collaboration. That. They had a Near like, Automata collaboration like a month ago. They did. Near Automata came out how many years ago? Like five, six years ago, and it, yeah, just recently they had a Near collaboration. That's actually pretty cool. I kind of like need to look into that. I'm pretty sure like that that uh, entire purchase thing is gone now with this Neon Genesis thing. But I thought that was pretty cool. I just saw like some random. They had a Jeremy Lin collab like months ago. <laughs> Dude, Fortnite's collabing with like some per like some guy now. Some guy. I forgot. Yeah, like, I don't <laughs> remember his. I didn't. I had no idea who the hell this person was. Honestly, I mean, at least that's somebody I know, but uh, his name's like Al uh, at A V. They play with like everybody, that. dude. They do, but I sometimes I, I majority of the time with app with like Fortnite, I know who they're collaborating with, but like it's this guy Ali A. I had like I was like, all right, I've done it, guys. I finally don't know who Fortnite. Like collaborates. a Spanish streamer or something. He's from the UK. Yeah. Apparently, he's like I don't know, I don't know where that is. UK. The yes. UK? Yeah. Yeah. Never heard of it. Some somewhere underneath the Earth's crust is where it's yeah. at. I think it's anarchy over there. Um. All right. That brings us to game recommendations for this week. I have the upcoming game. Uh, you have the existing game. You got something for us? Do I have something? I didn't come prepared, that's for sure. I did I didn't either. <laughs> I was too busy thinking I, I, about the topics. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure we should probably like come up with a new like you know end of uh end of like end of yeah. show. <laughs> Put something <laughs> because like at this at point, end. yeah, it, it makes me feel bad. I'm like, man, am I actually well, a gamer? Do I even remember what the hell I it, played? Or <laughs> think of it this way: if there's still people listening to us, uh, two hours later, they prop they like they deserve a reward anyway. So like. I mean, they're they're listening because they love us so much at that point that, you know, anything we say is is great. Most people have already stopped listening by the time you're two hours in. <laughs> That's true. I feel like we pick up a lot of people who are like either halfway through the stream or like kind of almost at like the 40, 40 minutes left mark. Yeah. Usually it's when we're right. I think we see the most people jump in. So we'll we'll talk about it offline, you know, yeah. we'll see what we can give them, because I don't know if like. I can remember or ever be prepared to like give you anything, especially when it comes to upcoming games. Because upcoming we, games, we've done like, a lot of them too. We've done a lot of yeah. upcoming games. Um, and every time we talk about upcoming games, we always get delayed. So then we can just reutilize them. And <laughs> but it's still them. upcoming, yeah. I mean, Starfield, guys, is coming in twenty twenty three. Watch out for that one. <laughs> oh God. Well, well, we'll come up with another another topic next next for next week but we are at time here you we? should be you should be looking forward to uh the new season of stranger things which starts in like two weeks how about that yeah if you didn't yeah, know me, it's coming in two weeks sarah and i are talking about that we're pretty stoked for the next season season yeah. or next stranger things season yeah there you go uh, okay all right guys we are heading out until next week uh go Go play a warped kart racer with Hank Hill and uh, Peter Griffin when it comes out. Peter Griffin. There you go. Yeah. That's, the, that's, that's the upcoming game, warped kart racer right there. I guarantee you people didn't know about that until today. So we already covered our bases with that. Awful. <laughs> the bourbon? No. The bourbon? No, no. Or... Really good. The oh, bourbon's okay. a little bit watered down from the ice cube, but like that's my fault. I wasn't drinking this fast enough, but it is making it a little bit easier to drink. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to see you back here next week on the Beyond Nemesis yeah. podcast. This has been one of your hosts, Mayor Reynolds. Bye. Ugh. And Jade, I just says bye. See you next week. Later.